space is truly unlimited. With so many possibilities for advancements, it is truly fascinating whenever anything is discovered. You never know what small finding will lead to something big, and what big findings will be revolutionary. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at recent space discoveries. Moon landing tapes got erased in 1969, one of the most significant scientific advancements of modern history was made, as man first stepped foot on the moon. Despite the clear importance of such a momentous occasion, the original footage could not be tracked down and was admittedly lost by NASA themselves. In 2005, NASA began to search for the 14 track data tapes that contained and recorded data that was transmitted directly from the moon. When these tapes could not be found, the assumption was that this data had been deleted and the tapes reused after transferring the data elsewhere. This was standard procedure and accepted practice at the time. These tapes included video footage alongside other data collected. On the NASA webpage, theories, criticism and mania surrounding the sensationalist headlines are addressed, as it is made abundantly clear that this data and information is available and accessible elsewhere. It is only the originals that were not found. The data was related to what was the Manned Spacecraft Center, though is now known as the Johnson Space Center during the mission itself. This, among other locations, recorded the data. There is no missing video footage or other information missing from the Apollo 11 moon landing. However, this questionable cloud has a silver lining. As NASA appeared to be engaged in a battle between the inaccurate headlines of the media, the hunt for the originals overturned higher quality broadcasting containing the video footage. NASA engineer Dick Navska and his team stumbled across this find. He said he and his team was desperate to do something for history, if we could. Kinescopes were found to have been recorded at the National Archives, and tapes were uncovered that were sent directly from Houston to CBS perhaps not in the original form, but the raw data was archived successfully. Following this successful and relieving discovery, NASA began work with a California company to restore and enhance the original footage, improving the definition and image quality, though this also proved to be a problematic move. With a Hollywood company on board, the rumors that the moon landing was faked, staged or recorded on a military base grew rampant once again. NAFSCA commented, this company is restoring historic video. It did not tell me where the company was from. Despite the rich rumors and strange headlines, there does not appear to be missing footage of Apollo 11, simply reformatted and discarded originals. All the information is there. NASA's $1 billion Jupiter probe sent back stunning new photos of Jupiter. When you think of the fact that we're investigating and exploring far-off places in space, how far away do you think it is? 10 million miles? 20? Try 563 million miles. This gaseous giant hasn't been one for close-up photos until pretty recently. Scientists sent a probe to Jupiter in 2015, and it will continue to orbit until at least July of 2021. Its main goal is to map the planet's magnetic and gravitational fields, but there are some pretty incredible bonuses to this. We get to see stunning photos as a result. Juno, the aircraft, flies over Jupiter's cloud tops at speeds 75 times as fast as a bullet. Flyovers, called perihoves, happen once every 54 days. Each time this is repeated, the Juno cam captures incredible photos of the planet and this information is bounced back to Earth where people around the world can download the stunning full-color photos. Its gas world clouds are vivid and forever changing, making no two photos alike. This is all a new process, Juno being only the second long-term exploration probe after the Galileo spacecraft which orbited the planet from 1995 to 2003. Space.com states that Juno is one of NASA's three New Frontiers probes. The others are New Horizons, which flew by Pluto in 2015, and OSIRIS-REx, which is expected to fly to asteroid 101 
955 Bennu in 2020 to collect a sample and return it to Earth. New Frontiers was a program NASA created in 2003 for medium-sized missions that are capped at $1 billion in development and launch costs each. The Curiosity rover, by contrast, cost about $2.5 billion. It also should be noted that Juno is different because it runs on solar power. The same publication writes that Juno launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on August 5, 2011. While eight other spacecraft have flown in Jupiter's neighborhood in decades past, part of what makes Juno stand apart is its ability to generate solar power from Jupiter's neighborhood. The other spacecraft relied on nuclear power. This aircraft is accomplishing incredible discoveries and sending us back some beautiful photos while we wait. Lunar Water Mystery A lunar water stream has been reported as water being spotted on the surface of the Moon by an efficient spacecraft likely to have originated from an anonymous source in lunar inner parts. This was made by NASA's Moon Mineralogy Mapper instrument aboard India's Chandranan 1 probe, which reveals the first detection of such magmatic water from lunar orbit and gave no doubt to analysis performed not too long ago on moon rocks brought to Earth by Apollo astronauts, not less than four decades ago. The lunar water stream was observed as there was evidence that the moon has water and hydroxyl, a more reactive relative molecule than of H2O. But commenters debate about the source of the water, whether it is widely or evenly distributed and how much might be present. As has been confirmed, the Moon doesn't have significant amounts of H2O, or OH, in its atmosphere most of the time, but when the Moon passes through one of these meteoroid streams, enough vapor is ejected and visible to detect. Detecting how much H2O and how much OH are present is something future Moon missions might reveal. NASA detected the vapor using its Neutral Mass Spectrometer, a device built by Goddard. The mission orbited the Moon from October 2013 to April 2014 and collected detailed information about the structure and composition of the lunar atmosphere. To release water, the meteoroids had to penetrate at least three inches below the surface. Below this bone-dry top layer lies a thin transition layer and then a hydrated layer where water molecules were likely stuck to soil and rock, called regolith. From the measurements of water in the exosphere, the researchers evaluated that the hydrated layer has a water concentration of about 200 to 500 parts per million, or about 0.02 to 0.05% by weight. This concentration is a lot drier than the driest terrestrial soil and is persistent with earlier discoveries. It is so dry that it would need to process more than a metric ton of regolith in order to collect 16 ounces of water. Because the material on the lunar surface is fluffy, even a meteoroid that's a fraction of an inch across can penetrate far enough to let out a puff of vapor. With each impact, a small shock wave fans out and ejects water from the surrounding area. When a stream of meteoroids rains down on the lunar surface, the released water will enter the exosphere and spread through it. About two-thirds of that vapor escapes into space, but about one-third lands back on the surface of the moon. High schoolers help discover four new alien planets. Two Massachusetts high schoolers, 16-year-old Kartik Pingley and 18-year-old Jasmine Wright, have helped to discover four brand new alien planets. 2021 is already showing incredible promise for being a great year in space exploration. The two young adults were in a program called the Student Research Mentoring Program at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology which links up high school students with scientists for annually based projects. SRMP director Clara Souza Silva, a cosmochemist at MIT, said the following in a statement. By the end of the program, the students can say they've done active, state-of-the-art research in astrophysics. Pingley and Wright worked with Tanzu Daylan, a researcher at MIT's Institute for Astrophysics and Space Research. He is also the lead author of the paper that the two high schoolers contributed to. They made the discovery by scrutinizing observations of the sun-like star HD108236 made by TESS. TESS stands for NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. 
Tess hunts for alien worlds using the transit method, meaning that the satellite watches for tiny dips in a star's brightness when a planet crosses or transits across its face. Alien planets are not meant to mean planets with alien life on them. These planets are also known as exoplanets, and they are a newer development within the scientific sphere. An exoplanet is a planet that orbits a star other than our Sun. Astronomers have now confirmed over 4,000 exoplanets, but the first one was acknowledged only in 1992. Previously, the orbit of planets around other stars had only been presumed. Space.com reports the statement that, I was very excited and very shocked, Wright said in the same statement. We knew this was the goal of Dalen's research, but to actually find a multiplanetary system and be part of the discovering team was really cool. They also share that three of the four newfound worlds are gaseous planets slightly smaller than Neptune. The fourth is a super-Earth, a rocky planet a bit larger than our own, the researchers said. All four exoplanets lie very close to HD 108236. Their orbital periods range from just under four Earth days to 19.5 Earth days. In an interview, Dalen said that our species has long been contemplating planets beyond our solar system, and with multiplanetary systems, you're kind of hitting the jackpot, he said in the same statement. The planets originated from the same disk of matter around the same star, but they ended up being different planets with different atmospheres and different climates due to their different orbits. So, we would like to understand the fundamental processes of planet formation and evolution using this planetary system. It is pretty incredible how quickly we have reached these kinds of discoveries. GRB 190114C Gamma Ray Burst Gamma ray bursts are incredibly powerful astronomical events that were first noted by scientists around 46 years ago. Although mysterious and not fully understood, they are fairly common and can be observed randomly in space almost every day. The most common cause of a gamma ray burst is when an enormous star, exponentially larger than our own sun, runs out of fuel. The core collapses on itself, forming a black hole which then projects particle rays from inside the blast through the outer remnants of the star. These initial particle rays react with the mass around it to form hugely powerful jets of gamma rays, which are the most highly energetic wavelength and move at almost 100% the speed of visible light. These initial bursts last for only a minute or two, followed by what scientists have termed the afterglow. This afterglow surrounds the site of the burst for several months following the event and is caused by the continued interaction of the ejected jets with surrounding space particles, which emit light on all frequencies across the wavelength spectrum from radio waves to gamma rays. Such a collapse of matter resulting in long-lasting jets of incredibly powerful gamma waves is collectively known as a gamma ray burst phenomenon and is widely studied in the field of astronomy. Previously, because the initial bursts are so short-lived and occur randomly in space, research regarding this phenomenon was limited to what astrologists could observe from the long-lasting afterglows, which are a representation of the burst event at lower energies. Because these events are the most powerful explosions in the universe, and understanding is limited to conclusions gathered from study of the phenomenon at its least energetic form, Researchers have made numerous attempts to view and capture the initial gamma ray burst, not just the afterglow, for analysis. And on the afternoon of January 14, 2019, they had a stroke of luck. NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope and Neil Gerl's Swift Observatory detected the gamma radiation from a pair of enormous bursts originating from the Fornax constellation and alerted the major atmospheric gamma imaging Cherenkov Observatory which was able to automatically detect and record the burst of a mere 50 seconds after it began. The two gamma ray bursts, named GRB 190114C, emitted the highest energy rays ever witnessed in such an event, making the gamma rays projected from the site of the burst the highest energy wavelengths ever recorded. Researchers are still attempting to determine whether or not the unusually dense environment of the system which occurred at the nuclear centre of several interconnecting galaxies, was what might have been conducive to such a large burst. 
This documentation of a component of a gamma ray burst that has not been able to be widely studied, especially when the event in question is the largest ever recorded, will help scientists to look at gamma ray theory from an entirely new perspective. Further analysis of the recordings of the initial event compared with continued study of the afterglow will radicalize the way that scientists study gamma ray theory. But what are your thoughts on these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.